page 356. Page 356. As we sing together, revive us again. Can you look at the screens as we sing this song here, Stephen? Look at the screens here. We praise the Sing the first and the fourth part of page 268. Of a message from the Lord, hallelujah. A message from to you I gave. It's recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that to look and live. Look and live.
Good evening, everybody. Good evening, uh, Randall. Welcome to our Sunday evening worship service here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. And it's our privilege to have each and every one of you, each and every one of you with us this evening for the search and to be a blessing. I guess you're looking behind the scenes. <laughs> 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 get so close, but I want to give the Lord thanks for the day, give the Lord thanks for the word of God and all the decisions we've made for our salvation and for those Christians who made the various to on this day. Just want to ask you to pray much for our people that's going to be lifted before the Lord in prayer. And that's going to be prayed for um, those of us, those folks who are not doing well. That's going to be prayed much for his tobacco cross. Let's pray for Brother Mark and his family. I pray for his son that was diagnosed with cancer. That's going to be prayed for the Mark and Father Red and his tobacco and he's feeling well today. Uh, so let's pray for him, Brother Mark. Let's going to lift our sister and his Mary before the Lord in prayer. That's going to be prayed much for our living folks. I was um, missing them off in my mind, and I, I always have a tendency of just looking in my mind's eye. I just have to try to settle what we're praying, and just look to that section. You remember everybody from that section, and I just let my mind just go on with Sister Linden. And I, I found myself when I was praying, and I was on that side there, and of course, it's the I mean, in my head. Okay, <laughs> and then you just get there. I don't know why, because then, next when you're praying, you've got your, everybody sitting in a special seat. And we call in that section, we call in everybody in the new office, and, that's, and she gets in and, and go out in that seat there. But hey, let's finish the pray for our family and anyway, pray the Lord's will be done in their lives. Let's finish the pray for our church. Pray for the work here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. Pray for the man of God that has been set to lead this work. Pray the Lord that we need to strengthen up for the day. Pray for the pray for the various ministries. We ask God that we pray, please be mindful of our friend day, the schedule on next week Sunday. God's will it. Pray that everyone will go well. Pray for the soul of God. Attended to the service. We pray that uh, most of all, if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, the person that made that week that day, will trust Him and pray. We ask and encourage each and every person to try and invite someone to come out with them. Try to get that person out so they can hear the word of God. It's going to be prayed for the track distribution ministry. And this is the um, council Lord's leadership and that. Pray for much for the, um, the combined prayer breakfast schedule for Saturday. After next is the 5th of November. Let's pray that everything will go well in that. Pray for everything to just be in these the same order. And pray also we ask you to, as the time goes near, we just want there and there to the end of the year. I pray much for the Christmas program and those persons who will be involved in that. Pray the Lord's will be done in that also. And then also let's remember our homecoming revival for next year. Lord's going to pray that everything will go well in that. Okay, at this time we, uh, we invite the Freddy Sands to the podium. For the scene which is going to be taken from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 33. 2 Chronicles 33, from verses 1 to verses 25. And so we invite uh, the Pretty Sounds to come at this time. Yes, 2 Chronicles 33. Very impressed with the test of this morning. 
and the verses go by, but it's not so really read for us. Second Chronicles 33, I'll just read verse 11, 12, and 13. The Bible says, Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Asia to Syria. They shook Manasseh among the thorns, and bowed him with feathers, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of it. Thank you that your word is forever settled in heaven. Forgive me if I have failed you. Forgive me if I have disappointed you. Forgive me if I have not been the kind of Christian I should have been before you. Forgive us if we have failed you. We ask now, Lord, that you meet with us in a special way for the next few minutes. As we study and share your word, may we learn a lot from the lesson. May we learn a lot from the life of this king, King Manasseh. And God, may we apply the things that we will learn. In our daily walk, uh, Lord, in our lives, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may be the kind of Christian that we need to be for you. Help us to love your word. Help us to love prayer. Help us to live our lives for you. Uh, meet with us in a special way. May we leave you truly changed because of hearing your word tonight. Leave you better, more determined to serve you, more determined to live for you, more determined to stand for that which is right, and to stand up uh, for the, the, the bloodstained banner of our Lord. Our Savior Jesus Christ. Love you now. Give us grace and strength and power. In Jesus' precious name, amen. What an interesting story. Uh, for, for the Psalms that you got through reading, uh, you got to read, Michelle said to me, What a, what a wicked man. Uh, he, uh, not you, but a son, but you made a wicked man. Yeah. He said, What a wicked man. Uh, he made tell you to do all the wickedness, and made tell you to get locked up. And then you won't get right. Uh, that's, that's amazing. It's amazing when you read the Bible, what you draw from the story that you're reading. So you don't just want to draw from the story you're reading. You want to see how, the, from the Bible, how it applies to your life. It's easy to sit and talk about that's so wicked. Yeah. But boy, we do a lot of things that uh, don't make God too happy. We do a lot of things that make God angry as well. And thank you for his mercy. Yeah. And that's so made God mad. I boy, I just say, Lord, please don't let me make God mad. I hope that's your desire. Do not make God mad. So I'm going to talk to you, not only about how Manasseh made God mad, but I'm telling you how Manasseh offended. How Manasseh offended. It's one thing to hear and do nothing about it and decide to stay that way. And then it's another thing to hear and to change. And I've always said this, and I believe this with all my heart. You and I can't change people. Only God can change people. We have to trust the power of the word of God to change people. Jesus even said, no man can come to Christ unless the Holy Spirit draws him. And so our job is to share the truth with people and watch the amazing power of God at work in their hearts and their life. And watch Christ transform them. If any man be in Alfie and Woodside, he's a new creature. We will all, no, 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 no. If any man be in Christ, Christ changes people. When I read the Bible, there's very few people that come in contact with Jesus who remain the same. Right. The morning when Derek cut himself, wouldn't wear clothes, spit out the mouth, was strong, was demon, demon possessed. When he met Jesus, even though he was out of his mind, when he met Jesus, the Bible said he was clothed and in his right mind. When that, when those ten lepers met Jesus, one of them, he had to come back to say, thank you. When you meet Jesus, something changes. And so when I read in the life of Manasseh, why I see the wickedness of this king, listen, that reigned for 55 years in Jerusalem. Why when you think you could figure out God, you got another thing coming. If I was God, I wouldn't have let Manasseh rule as long. I'd let Josiah or Hezekiah reign uh, longer. Sometimes we get exactly what we want. We get exactly what we deserve. We get exactly uh, for what our behavior uh, lends out. That we get it. The Bible says that the Nasser reigned for 55 years in Jerusalem. Uh, and when I 
see the wickedness of this king in the 55 year reign. I also see the great mercy and the love of our great God uh, towards uh, Manasseh and towards uh, the nation of Israel. And I'm so glad as I look at it, and I, I don't go to look at the trouble, but when I mess up, I'm so glad to know that God is merciful. Manasseh and his people did not obey. You hear me? Manasseh and his people refused to hear the word of God. It seems as if in his early days that Manasseh had no regard for man or God. He had no regard for man or God. There are some leaders like that in the world today. Uh, who can say to be that way? Uh, the leader of North Korea say to be that way. The leader of Iran say to be that way. Uh, they're, 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 they're seem to be some people like Manasseh that have no regard for God nor man. Uh, Manasseh just seemed to be that kind of a person. As we look at this king, uh, although he seemed that way, as we look at his wickedness and we see how God works in those 55 years, we also see a demonstration of the power of God. When I read, read of this king's life, I see how important it is for us to have godly leaders. Don't take it for granted, Christians, that we need godly leaders politically and we need godly leaders in our churches. And when I say that, I mean leaders that fear God. They have a respect for God. They have an awe of God. They fear God. We have to pray that our leaders, that, we, uh, that, that they fear God in all of their dealings. It is dangerous to us as a nation and as a people who are men and women leading us who have no regard for Jehovah. Not just for us, but it is important that we pray for us to have godly men and women leading us. Not just for us, but for our children and their children. Nasser was leading his people, the country of Jerusalem, down a very dark, dark, dark path. Just like we see today the path that Putin is leading the nation, the, the, the Russian people. You watch, you'll see many of them are protesting. But I would imagine the kind of man he is, many people have lives are being taken, snuffed out because of the kind of leader he is. Uh, they, they, it seems like many of our leaders have taken us on a path far from God and the things of God. I think of so many places in our world where people have so much trouble because their leaders are have and are taking their country down a very dark path. As I listen to the news, I see people in countries like Iran, Russia, Cuba, and many more who are punishing their people. You can't, you can't have an opinion. You can't protest. Well, if you protest, you risk losing your life. And I see this, the first thing that comes to my mind is the state of Christian brothers and sisters in these countries. While I sit in the bed of ease and may somebody may not take a gospel track from me. Or somebody may say, I come into church. That's the worst of it that we may experience here. When I think of my brothers and sisters in these parts of the world and what they're experiencing, and what they're risking when they talk about worshiping God. I ask God oftentimes, what are they what are they going through on a daily basis in their lives? I know we take a lot for granted as it relates to our service in our nation. Yeah, we might not be able to go in, uh, we might not be able to go in some gaming communities or some some people may forbid us from giving out tracks in certain places, but for the most part, we have a lot of freedom, a lot of religious freedom. No one, no one attempted to stop me from coming in this evening. I didn't have to go through no roadblock block and give no explanation to no armed police officer. Uh, there's nobody on the outside telling me what to say or telling us what we can sing or what we can't sing. We're not hiding the worship, we're doing it freely. But I don't want you to take it for granted that there's many people in the world who can't do this, who want this right. And it's because we take so much for granted. Manasseh was a very wicked king. I just hope that we take our responsibility of praying for our leaders. We 
Dearly Christians, we must take our responsibility of praying for the leaders of our nation very serious. I don't care who's in power, you better take, you better take praying for the Prime Minister and the Cabinet of the Bahamas, you better take it really serious. You better take praying for world leaders serious. Paul told young Timothy in 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 through verse 3, I exhort therefore, exhort what? That first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. This is what he says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that why? Why is it important, Christians, in case you do not know, why is it important to pray for men and women who are in authority? Why? I'll tell you why it is important, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. Nations before us who had these privileges took them for granted. And now today they have us looking back and saying they will question God. And they will blame God for the way their nation, the, 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 the condition that their nations are presently in. But it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that they turn their backs on God. And now today they are paying Christ spread. People asking, where is God in all of this? Why is that child suffering on it? Well, some poor leadership. Paul says that the young Timothy that we ought to pray for, for our leaders. He said this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So I believe that God has an expectation that the church would carry the nation on her knees. That we would, we would pray for those in authority over us. We would lift them up before God as they execute their duties. You do not want wicked leaders, church, hear me? You don't want people in the house of assembly who don't fear God, who have no regard for God. You don't want people in the house of assembly that want to shut the church down and don't see no value of the church and don't have no respect for Christians. You don't want them there. If they are there, you run the risk of them passing laws and regulations that will come up against the people of God and against the church of God. When we refuse to pray for our leaders, we run the risk of having our normal way of life disturbed. No peace. Listen to Solomon's views on leadership and persons in authority. Don't take the voting in your country lightly. Because you could put the next Hitler or Mussolini or Stalin in place and you regret it. So there's a responsibility that the Church of Jesus Christ has to educate its people that this is a very important task. This is what Solomon says. Why is it right in the heaven? He said, when the righteous are in authority, People rejoice. So what's the flip side of that? But when the wicked bear rule, the people more. Just watch it. Are the people in Iran happy tonight? Where I was listening on CNN, it says hundreds die every day. When the wicked and authority, the people mourn. So it is incumbent upon us to understand not to take this lightly. I watched as, as the drones fly into buildings and malls and, 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 and hospitals in the Ukraine. Putin seems like he doesn't care. He's sending them. Killing innocent people. He wants the Ukraine. He wants her. And he's doing everything in his power to get her. The Bible says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the, when the wicked bear in rule, the people mourn. I saw a beautiful young lady protesting in Iran. She was arrested. And then people started protesting and 
You do not know what they're doing to them tonight. Some of those fellas are so, so, so wicked, so diabolical that they will gas their people. Mass murder their people. Once again, don't take it for granted that Nassau was a wicked king. What I'm seeing today in these places, people are screaming in these places for rights and protesting that right. They're being killed by the hundreds daily. I, I saw when they said Putin is watching the midterms in America. And he is fighting in Ukraine but has an eye on America. While he's watching America, he's hoping that the Republicans would gain the House back because he has a belief that the Republicans are not going to give Ukraine a, 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 a blank check like they have now. America is going to pay more attention to its citizen, making sure that its economy is strong, and not going to, while they will help the Ukraine, but not to this extent to where it hurts their own homeland. So he's watching and he's fighting, hoping to that end that America would pull back some of our financial resources and military might so that he can have free reign and watch the Ukraine fall. Telling you tonight, we need godly leaders in every area of our daily walk. Manasseh was a wicked king for 55 years. He was a wicked king. What do, what do we learn from the life of Manasseh? The Bible says that Manasseh was an evil king, first and foremost. He came to power at the age of 12 and reigned for 55 years. And most of that reign was marked by a period of great wickedness, idolatry, and disobedience to the God of heaven. We as a people have a problem when our leaders have no, we should have a problem when our leaders have no regard for the whole God. The Bible says, but that which was evil, that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like under the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. And he ran up altars for Balaam, and made groves, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, where the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall be my name forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven, in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused the children to pass through the fire in the valley. Of the son of Hinnom, also he observed times and used enchantments and enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set carved images, the idols which he had made, in the house of God, which God had said to David and Solomon his son, in his house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before the tribes of Israel. Will I put my name forever? That's how wicked Manasseh was. He did after the abominations of the heathen. The people of God ran out of the land because of all of the idolatry and wickedness. When Manasseh came, became the king, he went after all the wickedness. He went after all of the abomination, the wicked, the things that were detestable. In the eyes of God, Manasseh went after them. The Bible says not only did he go after all of the abomination, he built again the high places, places of worship. So uh, it opened the doors for I told I would worship in Jerusalem again. He built altars to Balaam, false God. He worshipped the host of heaven. Manasseh started worshipping the star. And the moon and the cloud and the sun. He worshipped the hosts of heaven. Then he was satisfied and he went into the house of God and he built the altars in the house of God where he could sacrifice to his false God. He built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the Lord, desecrating, desecrating the place of worship for God's people. He caused the children to be sacrificed to false God. This is an answer. This is a wicked man. He began to, the 
said he stopped there. He began to involve himself in enchant enchantment. He began to get involved in the occult enchantments, the Bible says. And then he began to deal with those who have served times. Your horoscope, Sagittarius, and Virgo, and all these things. Oh, why can't you know Sagittarius? You know Sagittarius is a Christian. Come on, baby. He began to get involved in enchantments and observe times. He used, listen, he used witchcraft with, uh, with familiar spirits and visits. This man got into some serious stuff. These, uh, God told Saul to rid the land of all the visits and witches. And here's Manasseh engaging in this kind of behavior, behaving the king of Jerusalem. You know, I believe this. A lot of nations you see suffering the way they're suffering is because of them getting involved in occultic activity. I remember when I was in school, I had a professor by the name of Dennis Corr. Dennis Corr wrote a, a book on, wrote a book on music uh, called The Pied Piper of Rock Music. I know much about culture, it's not very familiar with rock music. Uh, you start talking to us about chocolate music, calypso, and merengue, rain straight. And what else? Merengue? Reggae, you also know reggae. If you start talking to us about those things, we are very familiar with that. When you start talking about rock music, we even got to be crazy. Because maybe that's not what we uh, I heard. Now I get to know a little bit about rock music because of where, 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 where I lived in America for a little while. But the average being in rock, what is popular today is rock music. The rock, the rock cultures. It's what the young people are into today. But then Scroll had a book, the back, that talked about back masking. And in, in music, and the back masking, these guys, one example, one example is with kids, kids in Satan's service. And one of the things they would do, they would sell themselves to the devil for popularity, for fame, and for money. I don't remember all of it now, but I remember doing the research when I was in school. But the music always had a subliminal message inside of it. There was always a hidden message inside of the music. The occult, the fellas that would sell themselves to the occult, and things like the go ahead. All these things were deeply involved in the rock music culture uh, that Dennis Carl exposed and wrote about. Dennis Carl told me when he was writing the book. Sometimes it'd be a calm day. He was so attacked by the demonic force of hell that it'd be a calm day his daughter would often have to run in their room because on a calm day like this, a big heavy breeze would just blow everything down in his house. As he was exposed in rock music and the backward masking that was involved in rock music, he was exposing it, and telling people about it. And he talked about how he was under constant attack for it. And I firmly believe a lot of nations, a lot of homes, a lot of lives, open up themselves to the occult. They've done it to music. They've done it to movies. You better be careful what you expose yourself to. Be very, very careful what you expose yourself to. When it comes to music, you know that Satan is the uh, is, 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 is a master of music. Bible talks about how your pipe was made with pipes. Little Richard said, you want to control the people, do it through their music. Music is powerful. I shared some stuff with Pastor that I've been reading on music uh, in recent times and just studying and going through it. It is amazing. I find no instruments in the Bible that tell me get all the way to the book of Revelation. And in the New Testament, tell me get all the way to the book of Revelation. See that God is really intent on hearing the voices of the people of God. No piano, no, no piano in the New Testament, no organ, no guitar. These things add to the value of the local, local church. So we have to be very, very careful. You better not expose yourself to movies, to music, to the other things you better do.
do your research and make sure that you are not exposing yourself to the account of Manasseh who cared nothing about that. He engaged in witchcraft. There are a lot of people who sell themselves to the devil for popularity and for fame and for money. The Bible says it talks about Manasseh provoked God to evil. He provoked God because of his evil. Listen as we listen and watch news. Many people are paying a price because of poor leadership. And the occult activity many leaders have led are because of occultic activity many leaders have led their people into in the problems today. And we ask where God is. Many countries are known for their voodoo, their witchcraft. Think what I want to touch you. And in some places in our land where you are there talking, somebody fix me. Somebody, come, somebody, somebody fix my brother. They get my brother fixed, they get my sister fixed. You hear that? So we have to be careful that we don't be staying prayed up, read up, and we stay in the word of God. So you see the wickedness of, you see how wicked Manasseh was. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 3, 9, so Manasseh made Judah, what is it? And the inhabitants of Jerusalem to air. That's how wicked he was. He causes people to worship false God, to get involved in occultic activity, to get involved in wickedness. This was the king leading the charge. The Bible says that, what is God's people now? The Bible says that they did worse than the heathen. You remember that God brought people out of these lands for the nation of Israel because of their abomination. And now Israel is there and they're doing worse than the people who was there before them. The Bible says they're doing worse than the people who God destroyed before them. Be careful of evil. Be careful of evil. You gotta stand right. You gotta you want to deal with evil, you want to dive into the word of God so you can see evil. The second, second thing is we hurry the Lord. The, the eyes of God, you need to remember this. Whatever you do, the eyes of God was on King Manasseh and his people. Right? God dies on Tabernacle Baptist Church. God dies in front of you. But the Lord spake to Manasseh and his people, but they were not out. Listen, God can talk to you before he deals with you. You hear me? If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, God can talk with you before he deals with you. He can give you a chance to change. Isn't he good? You're doing all this wickedness. You're doing all this wrong. You think you're right. You're innocent of nobody. But God can put you in a place where he can say to you, Micah, stop. Set apart all my counsel and would not offer my reproof. 
God says, I'm going to listen to me. God says, for come a day, I'm going to laugh. When your calamity come, I will mock you. When your fear come, when your fear come as desolation, and your destruction come as a whirlwind, when the stress and anguish come upon you, then you call upon me. Yes, God said, I will not answer. God said, you can seek me early, but you ain't find me. Wow. You better listen. The believers is ready to find out what the evil not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments. If you will not get for all these happenings, then I will punish you seven times more for your sin. God, they don't have sin. Go ahead. Their leaders, their people, their nations, Christians, who Jehovah is calling out to right now. Maybe to you. And you can tell him talking to you and telling you something, and you say, No way. You refuse to hear. This is for an individual or nation or churches. Is a very dangerous position to be in before God. Because before God judges, He's sending warning or He's calling out to you. Before you begin to deal, boy, you ain't want God to deal with you. When God decides to deal with you, the third thing is, you are easy prey. You are defenseless. When God calls, and you refuse to hear, understand that you become easy prey. Second Chronicles 33, Lemons, wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the kings of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with feathers, and carried him into Babylon. Then you fight against God, you become an easy prey. I cannot tell you how much time I see in the Bible where we have been warned not to fight against God. The God of heaven, because that is a losing part of you lose. The undisputed, undefeated champion of all time is Jehovah God. When God calls, you gotta listen. Second Chronicles 13 and 12 says, the old God himself is with us for our captain. And his priests with sounding trumpets to cry aloud against you, O children of Israel. Watch this. This is what God tell him. This is what God tell him. Fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not. Do you prosper? Don't fight against God. You're wasting your time. Just listen. Whatever God telling you today, just listen. Be strong and courageous, be not afraid for the king of Assyria. Not for all the money that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. Here is the arm of flesh that with us, and the Lord our God will help us. And the fight our battles, and the people who rested themselves upon the words of the king, the Hezekiah, the king of Judah. Hezekiah learned a lesson, but his son, Manasseh, did not. Hezekiah relied on God, but his son, Manasseh, did not. His son became very wicked. Became a very wicked man. Very wicked. So what do we learn from it? Jehovah sends the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria takes him. The Bible says he took him among the thorns. He bound the king with feathers, the Bible says. He took the king as a prisoner. Listen, church. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Second Chronicles 33, verse 13 tells us, Bible is had, says in verse 13, and the let's go back to verse 11, it says, Therefore the Lord brought upon him the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns. Put him among the thorns. My Lord. Look at the thorns, God got to put you among. Or put him, put him among the thorns. Then I'll be putting him among the thorns as punishment. Then he said, he bound him with feathers. My Lord, he had, now he's he got him in shackles. By God, I'm going to put 
not to experience the thorns of life. God, we just need to listen to you. Lord, now as we are going to our different and watch over us, protect us, keep us. Lord, we love you, we praise you. Come to you, we'll do it in our lives.